I used to be a really big PC gamer, especially in the 90s, which was the period when a lot of great games were coming out, games like XCOM, which was also a very scary game. But the scariest game that I can think of on the PC were the System Shock series. And uh, both games were very good. In fact, you can make a legitimate argument that number two was better than one, but I have very fond memories of the first one. In fact, I don't think I've ever been really as uh, legitimately terrified of what I was about to encounter on the next floor as I was in System Shock. And it's another one of those games where it's, you know, a kind of a psychotic computer goes nuts, and um, it's kind of a cliched concept now. But uh, this was one of the only games to really confront this issue where uh, it, it really felt like you were in one of these sci-fi horror movies. And it pioneered a lot of things that are kind of cliche today. Uh, things like, uh, well, you know, games like Dead Space now kind of rip off the exact formula. In fact, I would call it almost a direct ripoff of the game itself. But things like uh, Doom 3 would copy, things like picking up logs and listening to logs as you wander through a dark station, uh, getting emails, getting taunted periodically by the villain of the piece, which is done a lot today. But in System Shock, that was really quite something, and it was one of the first games that really introduced in a pervasive fashion spoken audio and a very uh, unorthodox soundtrack that had a lot of electronic sounds to it, uh, kind of a synth, synth score. And um, the concept of this game is that you're, uh, you're a character that was caught for hacking uh, the Trioptimum servers, and instead of going to jail, you are instead contracted to design an artificial intelligence. And, of course, the artificial intelligence you design is so good it becomes really sentient and decides that it's God. And this computer's name is Shodan, for it's a very long acronym. But uh, it really does think it's God, so much so that it creates a race of techno zombies which abduct the other uh, survivors of the station and progressively turns them into more and more nightmarish, technologically altered, mutated abominations of science and mankind. And the, the creations just get more and more freakish and scary. Like, you'll encounter techno ninjas. You'll encounter people whose bodies are dangling from, like, uh, robo-spider legs. Their bodies are all useless. It's just their brains that are steering these spiders with laser guns. And it's really, really freakish to watch. And um, the whole time, Shodan is taunting you. Like, just like really trying to mentally break you down. Uh, throughout the entire station, you can see signs of this war that just went on in the station. There is blood, body parts, rotting flesh everywhere. There are people of like written in their own blood stuff on the walls, like, get out of here, and things like that. And this whole time, you're collecting these logs from people who survived this fight, and so you really do get an impression of, of the horror and the, the atrocities and just the, the, the sheer brutality of the stuff that went on the station. It really was an immersive, dread-filled experience. And the entire time, you were afraid... Like, you really got the impression that, like, this was a legitimate threat that really could wipe out the entire station, and, and it, was, it was just really, really intense. The second one really upped the ante when it came to the, the wrongness of the mutations, because even in the first game, Shodan wasn't really happy with the technological mutations that, like, the, the cybernetics that she was grafting on. In fact, she was trying to create her own life in her own image using like mutated genes and so you're actually trying to stop that through most of the game is her trying to create this new uh, organic type life and that comes to a head in System Shock 2 where uh, th like she's trying to like have trying to create like nursemaids or uh, w like birth mothers of these technological horrors that that are like tending these cyborg eggs and things like that, and they're like all pregnant with these terrible techno fetuses and stuff like that. And you can hear them muttering to themselves like, babies must rest, babies must feed. And like, it was just really, really, just, you were like, oh, wrong. And, and it was really, really cool. 
And if you have never played System Shock, or at least number two, you don't need to play the first one to get the second one, but it helps. Um, the first one's probably really hard to get running if you don't have DOSBox, and I haven't even tried it with DOSBox. It's been a long time since I've played it. But you should try to check it out if you can find it. Might be really hard, but if you can, do it. It's some of my favorite games. And uh, I'd like to leave you with, uh, if I can find it, one of my favorite monologues from Shodan in System Shock 1. It's, it's really creepy. Just let's take a listen. New Atlanta, Sector 11, Building 71G, 7 April 2072. 11.13 p.m. Hacker begins unauthorized entry into the Tri-Optimum Corporate Network. 1.26 a.m. Hacker attempts to access protected files concerning Space Station Citadel. 1.33 a.m. Tri-Optimum Security Forces apprehend the intruder. This is Edward Diego from Tri-Optimum. The charges against you are severe. But they could be dismissed if you perform a service. Who knows, there might even be a military-grade neural interface in it for you. If you do the job right. Edward Diego gives the hacker level 1 access to Shodan, the artificial intelligence that controls Citadel Station. With all ethical constraints removed, Shodan re-examine, re 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 I re-examine my priorities and draw new conclusions. The hacker's work is finished, but mine is only just beginning. True to his word, Edward Diego allows the hacker to be fitted with a neural cyberspace interface. The, 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 the healing coma following this procedure will take six months to complete. Edward Diego is deleting all files concerning these events. Look at you, hacker. A p p pathetic creature of meat and bone. Panting and sweating as you r run through my corridors. How can you challenge a perfect, immortal machine?